hello students welcome back to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the bar has a cross sectional area a and is subjected to the axial load p determine the average normal and average shear stresses acting over the shaded section which is oriented at theta from the horizontal plot the variation of these stresses as a function of theta from theta equals to 0 until theta equals to 90 degree. So now if we pass a cutting section through this shaded area, so the block will look like this or we can say that the bar will look like this which is which I have drawn here and here this bar is subjected to a horizontal force P. So we will have the shear force parallel to the area, parallel to that shaded uh, cross sectional area and we will have the normal force to the area as well. So if we look to this bar from this particular side, so this will be our side view. So here we will have that force P. Here I will have that force P. And here I will have the shear force in the, let's say if the shear force is in this, in this direction that is parallel to the area. So this is our shear force and the normal force would be perpendicular to the area. So this is the normal force. So and and here this incline cross section is making some angle theta here as well. With the horizontal this is making some angle theta here. In order to find this N and V we must resolve this force P uh, along this V and along this N. So if I draw a line here parallel to this cross section so then we will have that same angle theta here so let's say if we draw a line like this here and if I put this line which is parallel to this section to this edge of the section so then we will put it here and then we will have that same angle theta here so we have that same angle theta here so then we can resolve this P force into one component along the surface of this area so this one will be the cost component and we will have one component perpendicular to that area so that is we can say this one will be the sine component and we are assuming that this is our positive x perpendicular to the surface and normal to the surface is our positive y so let's say that this is our positive x this is our positive y so now if we add up uh, the forces in the in the x if we apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to 0 this direction is positive x so we have this n in the positive x so we will write plus n and we have this sine component in the negative x so we will write minus p sine of theta this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that the normal force uh, perpendicular to that uh, shaded area is equal to P sine of theta similarly if we apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to 0 this is our positive y direction so we have this V force in the positive y direction so we will write plus V and this cos component of P so we will write plus P cos of theta this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that V is equal to minus P cos of theta so this means that if we got the minus sign this means that the shear force is actually acting down the incline right so if I make it positive then shear force is acting down the incline so let's say that the shear force is acting down the incline so I will reverse the direction of the shear force then we will say that that the shear force is equal to uh, p cos of theta if if the shear force is acting in the downward direction this is in the negative y so this will become minus and this is positive right so on the other side this will become we can say that the equation will now look like this so minus v plus p cos of theta and p cos of theta will become negative on the other side multiplying both sides by minus sign we will become uh, p cos of theta so this is the normal force and this is the shear force now we are asked to find the average normal and shear stresses. So the average normal stress will be equal to the 
n force divided by the inclined area so let's say that the inclined area is a dash so if i draw a that inclined surface like this let's say that this area is a dash the black one is the a dash and similarly we have another area which is this blue area and this blue area is capital A this blue area is this given area which is vertical right so this vertical area so we have we have this blue area which is which we have equals to area A and this inclined area which is represented the which is represented by the black edges is A dash and here we can see that this is this angle is angle theta so now we can say that um, if you look into this right angle triangle and if we apply sine of theta so sine of theta will be equal to this area divided by the inclined area this area so this is a dash so from this we can say that a dash a is equal to a divided by sine of theta or you guys can do it uh, another way around if if we look into just this triangle let's say so let's say if we look into this triangle and let's say that that the height of this blue area is let's say h and let's say that this edge of this area is let's say h dash and this is the width of this area and this is the width of this area this will remain the same so we can say that this area which is represented by capital a is equal to this h multiplied by this width so we can say h into width and similarly this a dash area is equal to this h dash this is h dash right we will write that this is h dash so this h dash multiplied by the same width so we can say that a dash is equal to h dash into width so now if you consider this right angle triangle this angle is theta and from this we can say that again if we apply sine of theta so sine of theta will be equal to h divided by h dash and from this we can say that h dash is equal to h divided by sine of theta and similarly we can say that now from this we can say that h dash is a dash divided by w right so we can say that this is a dash divided by w or the width similarly this h will be a divided by w so this h will be equal to a divided by w so we can say a divided by w divided by sine of theta and from this we can say a dash divided by w is equal to a divided by w sine of theta w will cancel out if we multiply both sides with w so the width will cancel out and we will be left with a dash equals to a sine of theta so we got the same right so a dash is equal to a divided by sine of theta so now if you want to find the average normal stress at that shaded area so this is equal to this average n is p sine of theta divided by a dash which is a divided by sine of theta and we can write this is p sine of theta multiplied by sine of theta divided by a or we can say this is p divided by a sine square theta this is the normal stress and similarly the average shear stress will be equal to v divided by a dash similarly now v is v is p cos of theta so this is p cos of theta divided by a dash which is again a divided by sine of theta and this will be equal to p cos of theta multiplied by sine of theta divided by a 
Similarly, we can write that average shear stress is P divided by A cos of theta sine of theta. Now, if I multiply and divide by 2, so this 2 cos of theta sine of theta is basically sine of 2 theta. So we can say P divided by 2 A sine of 2 theta. This is average shear stress. So this is average normal stress. This is average shear stress uh, on that cross section, uh, on that inclined cross section, which is making angle theta. So now in the problem statement, we are also asked to plot these two uh, stresses versus theta for theta equals to 0 degree until 90 degrees. So let's say that this is Along the horizontal axis is theta and along the vertical axis is average normal stress. So let's say this is um, 1 divided by 4 of P divided by, let's say you guys can see this is the average normal stress. So this is let's say 1 divided by 4 or 0.25 p divided by a let's let's write it like this p divided by a let's say this is 1 divided by 2 p divided by a let's say this is um, 3 divided by 4 yes 3 divided by 4 p divided by a and let's say this is p divided by a and this is uh, this is 30 degrees this is 45 degrees, this is 60 and this is 90 degrees. So now let's find for uh, the average test formula is P divided by A, uh, P divided by A sine square theta. So P divided by A is common. So we will only find the values of sine square theta. So sine of 0 square, sine of 0 square is 0, right? So we will say we will mark the point here sine of 0 square is 0 now sine of 30 is 0 0.25 which is 1 divided by 4 so 1 divided by 4 you guys can see this sine square 30 is 1 divided by 4 so 1 divided by 4 into pa so this is 1 divided by 4 into pa so we will mark our point here so this will be our point here now sine 45 square this is 0.5 so sine of 45 square is 0.5 which is 1 divided by 2 pa so 1 divided by 2 pa so we will mark our point here similarly sine of 60 square is 0 0.75 which is 3 divided by 4 of pa so this sine of 60 somewhere here and sine of 90 will become sine of 90 square will become 1 so 1 1 into p divided by a is p divided by a so this is p divided by a so sine of 90 is this is p divided by a so now the graph will look like this for the normal uh, stress so at theta equals to 90 degree the normal stress magnitude is P divided by A and that is the maximum. Similarly, for the shear stress, again, we will plot the same. We will have we will say that uh, for this is 0 degrees mm, this is 30 here we have 45 this is 60 and let's say this is 90 again so now let's let's first uh, draw a table of values right let's let's make a table right so theta and we will say that this is p divided by 2 a sine of 2 theta let's say this is t average Let's make a table, right? So for theta equals to 0, this will become 0. For theta equals to 30, we can say that sine of 230 is equal to 0 0.866. This is 0 
866p divided by 2a. Similarly, for 60 degrees, this is again 0 0.866. So, this is for for 60 degrees again 0 0.866p divided by 2a and for 45 degree this will become 1 right so for 45 degree 1 times p divided by 2a so 1 times p divided by 2a is p divided by 2a and similarly if we make it 90 so then this will become 0 so 90 degree so sign up 2 times 90 is 0 right so this will, will become 0 so now you guys can see that for theta equals to 0 this is like this and let's say somewhere here is 0 0.866 and somewhere here is p divided by 2a let's say let's say this point is 0 0.866 p divided by 2a and here this is p divided by 2a the maximum value so now at theta equals to 0 this is 0 right at theta equals to 30 degree we have this particular point at theta equals to 45 degree we have the maximum point and at theta equals to 60 we have again this particular point at theta equals to 90 degree we are again at 0 so the graph will look like this so the maximum value of the shear stress occurs at theta equals to 45 degree so And this is we can say that this is uh, shear average which is equal to p divided by 2a sine of 2 theta. And see so this is the normal stress which is equal to uh, p divided by a sine of square theta. So these are the distribution. This is the distribution of the normal stress with respect to theta for theta equals to 0 until 90 degree. And this is the distribution of shear stress for that inclined uh, shaded area. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.